Okay, so the next lab we have is actually something so quick and easy. If you look into uh, this experiment, it doesn't really require a lot of time, which means two lab reports on one deadline, probably it will be okay if you do them together, knowing that this one is really short. It's about buoyant force or Archimedes of trust. I'm sure, so why am I doing lab seven? Because it's in the order in our uh, uh, schedule. Also, uh, lab seven was done with our Monday by our Monday section like two weeks ago. So I want us to finish it as a Tuesday section. Did you start with that in the course? Tell me. Yes? No, doctor. Not at all. So what you remember could be high school or not even high school, could be middle school. What do you know about buoyant force? And let me save as the file and write what you tell me. Yes, flashbacks of a very miserable childhood. Tell me. Okay, so it happens in water. So yes, water, that's it, only water. Fluid. Any fluid, fluid, it could be a gas, you know this. And that's why, by the way, a balloon filled with helium would float up. All right, what do you remember about buoyancy other than that? The greater the surface area of contact with the fluid, the greater the buoyancy. Not at all, Mia, and this is a misconception. So basically we need to discuss the VM, which is the immersed volume under the water, which could be related to the surface area in a way. Mia, I'm so happy you gave me this answer, by the way. It's the upward force the object experiences in the liquid. Okay, so yes, it is an up thrust, so it's an upward force and um, it causes objects to float. Gael, every time you have flotation, in which case do you have flotation, which case not? Objects float. Sometimes they do sink, even though they experience uh, buoyancy, right? Or the Archimedes upthrust. The Archimedes upthrust is always there. Yeah, but it does not always give you Flotation, any idea? All right, this is a liquid, right? A liquid in a container and you have an object inside. What are the forces on this object? Weight and the buoyant. All right, so I'm gonna call it Mg for the weight and for the buoyant force, I'm gonna call it F. So you tell me in this case, do I have flotation so the, or not? The weight is much higher than the buoyant force. Exactly. The object will probably sink. Exactly. Will actually sink. So when Mg is greater than F, the object sinks. When Mg is equal to F, the object will stay in the middle. When F is greater than Mg, the object is going to go up, 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 up until it reaches the surface. And this is where F is going to be a bit less for equilibrium to occur because F is related to how much uh the part of the volume is under the water i'm going to discuss this issue that i believe is very important in a moment all right this is the setup i'm going to start with the setup okay so yes the forces are weight and buoyant force the object could be at equilibrium or not what you have and i think i realize this is a picture it's a double picture by mistake you have a stand do you see the stand you can build it yourself you just need rods, yes. And what is that? Can you guess? It's a sensor, I would tell you. What type of sensor? I guess it maybe measures the Newtons. Yes, force. it is the same force sensor I used in the collision. However, the force sensor we used previously did not have a hook. It had a bumper. It was measuring the push force. Now I'm gonna measure the pull force. Yes, the pull force. Thank you, Clara. So, and as you can see, you have a wire and you have a cylinder, okay? And obviously I'm gonna dip the cylinder inside the liquid. This is a container and most probably you have water or not, we're gonna see. And you're gonna move this platform a bit up for the cylinder to go inside the water because it's really tough to every time unscrew this one and put the motion, the force sensor a bit down and it's not really uh, uh, smooth. It cannot be done smoothly. However, if you turn the platform up a bit, the cylinder will go inside the water and it's gonna be done very smoothly. And I love this. 
By the way, in the past, we used to unscrew for every one millimeter or I mean five millimeter dipping the cylinder. Now the question for you is, what does the force sensor measure? Can you guess? What does the it measure? The difference between the weight and the force. Exactly, it's not yes. gonna measure the real weight. It's gonna measure something called the apparent weight. And to be honest, the apparent weight is the real weight, the mg you know, minus the Archimedes. So it's gonna weigh a bit less because the Archimedes upthrust or the buoyant force. All right, so you know that the force sensor needs calibration and it needs zeroing. I'm gonna, ze I'm gonna calibrate it for you before you start the experiment and your job is to zero it. So you're gonna remove the wire, zero the force sensor, it's gonna give you zero and put the wire back on the hook and start taking measurements. All the measurements will be called the apparent weight. Now you tell me, how can I find the real weight? I have no idea what's M. I have a cylinder, nothing is written on it. I don't have a bathroom scale or even a scale in the lab. By the way, the lab has a scale that is broken. We go to the chemistry lab to measure sometimes. I hope they fixed it already. So how do I measure the real weight? Measure, yeah. Easy, it's a very easy answer. Don't go far. I will basically measure the weight of the cylinder outside the water. So when the cylinder is outside the water, whatever you measure is, is actually the real weight. And whenever it is in the water, whatever you measure is the apparent weight, okay? Yes, so now before we discuss all this, so this is basically experimental. Experimentally, you know how to measure the real weight and you know how to measure the apparent weight and definitely you know how to find the buoyant force by doing one item minus the other item. But what is the buoyant force really and what is it dependent on? I assume that you can't remember anything about it. The buoyant force is this. Rho G V M, but I need to discuss what each represents. So Rho is the density of the liquid. Let me call it density of the liquid. And let me stress on L because a lot of students would think it's the density of the solid. It has nothing to do with the density of the solid. That's why sometimes you add salt to your water to make, I don't know, the egg float or something to float. G is the gravitational field strength. Yes, you can take it to be 9.81. Uh, newton per kilogram or meter per second squared and vm is the volume that is underwater so if you want and let me zoom in this is vm it's only the part underwater okay so the bigger the vm the greater the buoyant force the bigger the density the greater the buoyant force and nothing else i don't care about the mass of the system the density of the system not even if it's hollow or not Hala density of the system, mass of the system, hollow or not, will affect your MG to make it less and to probably have flotation in the future, but they're not gonna affect F itself. And trust me, those questions will come a lot in the MCAT later on, like all these uh, conceptual understanding of on how each parameter will, uh, will do. Here, VM is actually this one. It's part of the volume. In this case, Vm is all of the volume you have, okay? I need somebody to help me with calculating Vm. How do you calculate Vm? I'll measure, it's up to you. I have a cylinder that is partially immersed. How do I find Vm? Any method. Displaced volume, okay, what she means with, with displaced volume, uh, you can measure the volume of the liquid before and after and see how much it has been displaced. Also, usually we do this. Let me find the video and I find it a bit funny. Uh, you can dip your cylinder. By the way, this is the cylinder. You dip it in the water. The level of the water is just at the tip of this tube. And whenever you dip your cylinder, you will have an overflow of water that will fall down in this, cylinder, in this beaker. So this will give you the displaced volume if you want. Uh, this is very uh, nice and creative. However, it's a bit confusing for some students. But what, interest, what is interesting about this experiment is two, two things. One, it has a lot of history. 
this is how Archimedes was doing the experiment. Two, if you take the liquid that is in a small beaker and weigh its weight in newtons, it's going to be equal to F. And this is the big deal. And a lot of students cannot understand this. So the Archimedes upthrust is equal in magnitude to the weight of the displaced liquid. And if you really think about it, it's obvious from the equation, isn't weight mg, right? And isn't m rho density times v? So this is mg of the liquid. Anyway, you don't have to think about all this. Yeah, you don't have to think about all this. However, it's great if you can, if you know uh, the stuff. So Mia gave me an, an option to find Vm is to measure the displaced volume. Any other methods to find Vm? Like here, how do I know how much is Vm if I'm dipping my cylinder inside? And I don't have means. This beaker does not have any graduations and I don't have a tube to collect the overflow. How do I find Vm? Probably measure, yeah. How? A ruler, I have a ruler. I can use a ruler. How do you measure the volume of the ruler? What is the volume of a cylinder? Hello? Anyone? Am I disconnected? We forgot. Okay. So, it's actually not of, of a big deal. What you can do is to find the volume of a cylinder. Just imagine this cylinder is like you have DVDs on top of each other. I don't know if your generation know what's a, a DVD because it was my daily childhood uh, toy. So DVDs on top of the, each other, yes. And the area of a DVD is pi r squared. That's so true, times the height. So Gael, it's not V times height, it's the area times the height, okay? So to find this volume, it's gonna be pi r squared, yes. You know, all my morning was quiet. They just started at one. Why, weird. Times, I'm not, I'm not gonna call it height, I'm gonna call it the depth, okay? But depth is gonna be confusing because I already have density. Let's call it a height, but remember, it's not height of the whole cylinder. It's the height of the part under the water, which is how deep you're dipping your cylinder, okay? Now, density of the liquid is a constant. G is a constant. Pi is a constant. R is a constant. I can measure it with any vernier caliper or ruler. Height is going to be my variable. Let me show you how. I'm going to lower the cylinder inside the liquid by moving the platform up. I'm gonna lower it inside the liquid five millimeters at a time and measure F, five extra millimeters, measure F. And you can see it here, five extra millimeters. Like I will start with depth zero, then five millimeters, then 10 millimeters, then 15 millimeters, which is half a centimeter at a time and find the apparent weight and then find the buoyant force and so on. Now the question for you is, what do I plot to get a linear relationship? What do I plot to get a linear relationship? And I see a lot of girls, active girls, and the boys are not active. Shoo, why not George? You know, I'm sexist. I always believe girls are active and I know I'm wrong. So I want you to prove me wrong. We only have George and Giscard. Why no Giscard? Josepina. I'm here, doctor. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> F versus H. Thank you so much. So we're gonna yes plot. Why aren't you sure? Didn't we say that density is constant? G constant, pi constant, R constant, and H is my first variable. F is the measured value. So obviously everything is a product. Like you have density times g times pi times r squared times h. So if I plot f versus h, and remember h is how deep the cylinder is going inside the liquid, I will obviously get a straight line passing to the origin. Now another question, and boys be careful, what does the slope represent? I know it's easy, but it's okay. Rho g pi r squared. Yes, thank you Giscard. So it is rho g 
pi r squared. So you have everything. You can find rho of the liquid, right? Let me write rho L because I want to remind you it's the liquid. So you're going to do it for a tap water. What is the density, the theoretical density of tap water? I don't know. We're going to assume it's 1,000 kilogram per meter cube. However, we know it's not because it's full with impurities. Uh, and probably the cylinder, the beaker is not clean enough. We always ask the students to clean it first. And the results I will give you are students' results, you know? So I don't know what they might do as errors. Clean the beaker well, tap water is not clean. Uh, I don't know the temperature could affect the density of the, of the water. Yeah, I don't know, think about it because sometimes they use cold or hot uh, tap water. And liquid number two is going to be salt and water. And it's going to be a lot of salt. We're talking about uh, around 250 grams of salt added to your water. Like, it's a lot. You cannot dissolve them in the water. It will take you forever to try to dissolve them. The reason why we're adding a lot of salt, because we want to see a change in the slope. And question number three, boys be ready, and girls too, if I add salt to my system, what happens to the slope of an FH graph? Does it increase or decrease? If I add salt to my water, what happens to the slope? Like if I repeat the experiment, it's obviously going to increase because, thank you, Mia, because adding salt will increase the density and slope is proportional to density. So I will have something like that. But don't get too excited because the difference in the slope is going to be so little. And we already had issues where the students do the uh, experiment <clears throat> with the salt added and no change in slope whatsoever. This is where we ask them to repeat the experiment again and add even more salt. I think the reason is the cylinder is too small to feel this difference, you know? All right, so this is how we find the real weight outside the liquid. Real weight is basically uh, your first measurement you do when the depth is zero, okay, like outside the water. And here it's the apparent weight. We're gonna do liquid one and liquid two. The question is only find the slope, all right? No error on the slope, but I'm not sure. Let me check the lab report with you. Uh, this is a set of measurements. Uh, probably I'm going to give you different results or probably I'm going to tell you use those. Okay, I will let you know. Uh, I gave this video to my students in the fall. Let me remember. No, I can't remember. Probably it was in the spring of 2020. This is when we stopped going to LAU suddenly. We were on campus up to lab four and suddenly we stopped and I couldn't. Uh, nobody could uh, do the recording of this lab, okay? And by the way, I had a broken leg also, so I couldn't go to the campus and we had the lockdown. So I believe uh, this is from PASCO and PASCO means uh, the same equipment we use. However, the experiment is not exactly what we were doing, but I believe it's very nice if you watch the video and I will share the thing with you. Uh, two guys doing the experiment. Uh, doing two experiments, actually. This is their fourth sensor. Uh, they were collecting the displaced liquid and uh, measuring the force. And they show you some results that I believe uh, are very interesting. Uh, it's very difficult for me to go fast forward through a YouTube video that is online and not downloaded. We'll share with you the link. Also, we have, I think, I don't know who, I forgot, probably Dr. Samar, who did the actual experiment later. Is that Dr. Summer? Let me check. Yes, with our actual tools, which means our force sensor with a hook, our data studio. And you see, the reading is basically digital. You just have to read it. You don't have any graph to read from, nothing. You just have a screen and the force given to you. This is the beaker I was talking about. And this is the blue platform that can be raised up and down. She's explaining the calibration here. I don't know what's that, probably showing you the setup fixing the force sensor, explaining that it shouldn't, the cylinder should not oscillate. Otherwise, the measurement is going to oscillate. Could be source of error, showing you the uh, science workshop used. 
And I would want to see one measurement. Now she's zeroing the force sensor before she puts the cylinder on it. Okay, this is the cylinder and you see it's attached to a wire. Uh, she's writing some values. Okay, probably I cannot scroll through it. Okay, I was hoping, let me move a bit fast. I was hoping to show you one measurement at least. Okay, so here you see she already attached it. All right, she got a measurement. Negative measurements means a pull. So we should ignore the minus. And this is basically the apparent weight, not the Archimedes uptrust. By the way, by the way, a lot of students that were creative many semesters ago decided to put, and uh, I'm not gonna do that in the results, but probably Ms. Summer is gonna discuss it a bit. Decided to put, let me show you here, decided to put the cylinder hanging down from the force sensor then zero everything. It's as if they zeroed the weight and everything they measure next is the extra, which is the Archimedes. So they didn't have to measure the weight apparent and then calculate the Archimedes. They were measuring the Archimedes directly. And I believe this is interesting, okay? Yes. Now, in the remaining time, I want to show you the lab report just for you to see what to expect. But you see how quick the lab is? So talking about deadlines, 10 days would be enough for two lab reports. I don't feel bad at all. So what do you think? This is a question you usually answer before you do the experiment. Table of results will be given to you. Probably I'm going to remove buoyant force and put instead the, the apparent weight. And you calculate the buoyant force. How do you measure the buoyant force? You need to explain that we actually measure the apparent weight and then calculate. Or you can say, I can zero the force sensor, anything you want, but give an example, numerical example, because probably your explanation is not gonna be clear. Plot, you can do it in one shot on Excel, calculate the slope oh, and the error on it, which means you need to know which measuring tool I used for the depth, for you to know the error, which measuring tool, no, basically the error on it, and that's it. They will not ask you to find the density and the error on it, but uh, deduce the value of the density and the error on it, which means you need to know everything with the error on it, or at least what measuring tool uh, is given to you. And I'm going to add this to your measurements. Discuss precision and accuracy. This is nice. Deduce the value of the density of salty water or compare both densities, explain any difference. And that's it. It's not like you have anything else to do. Okay. So what I can do, I can share with you the following results and add some values or at least which measuring tools I did to measure the disk of the diameter, which is here, and probably give you the error on G and so on. And now I'm going to save this under your name. And that's it for our session that is very short. Hopefully, I can upload everything tonight with an announcement about the deadlines. OK? Now I'm going to stop recording. Please stay if you have any question.